The purpose of this video is to continue to have a look at Achievement Standard 3.1 for NCA Economics and look particularly at the ideas of consumer surplus, producer surplus and allocative efficiency. So first of all, consumer surplus, you need to get your head around this, is the difference between the maximum amount a consumer is willing to pay for a product and the price the consumer actually pays. So basically, I explain this as when you walk into a store and you look at see something that you would really quite like, you tend to have in your mind an idea of what sort of price you're prepared to pay. If the price is less than that, then you'll probably buy it. Consumer surplus is then the difference between what you thought you would have been prepared to pay and what you actually had to. So, for those of you who are familiar with marginal utility, again, the difference between the satisfaction you would get from buying it if you put a price value on that and the price you had to pay. So on the graph, it's the area between the price, PE, and the demand curve. So it's that area there. You can calculate that area very simply by finding the area of the triangle. Remember, the area of a triangle is always half times the base. So the base in this time would, and at this point would be between 0 and QE, um, times the height, which would be the difference between PE and whatever price the demand curve crosses the price axis at. Okay, so you might be asked in an NCA paper to actually calculate that area. Producer surplus is kind of a similar concept. In this case, it's the difference between the price a producer receives for a product, so the price they're selling it for, and the minimum amount they would have been prepared to accept for it. So again, if you're a producer, you might have been prepared to accept, say, $2 for a product, but the market price is 4 or $5, so producer surplus will be the difference. Um, in terms of graphs, it's usually the minimum amount would be the marginal cost of producing the product, because that includes the opportunity costs for the producer's time and, and various other things. So the difference between that and the price they actually get for the product is producer surplus. So coming back to our graph, um, it's the area between the price PE and the supply curve out to QE. So that is that's consumer surplus, and the orange area there is producer surplus. So you can calculate the value of that again, same way, half times base times height. So the base is always out to QE, and the height is from PE down to where the supply curve uh, intersects the price axis. Okay, so from that we have this idea of allocative efficiency. Allocative efficiency is always achieved at market equilibrium because that is where consumer and producer surpluses are maximized. Basically the gain to society is at its, at its highest level at equilibrium. If we try any other price quantity combination, we'll lose some consumer or producer surplus and that won't maximize the benefit for society. Now, if demand or supply change and we end up with a new equilibrium, the market's still going to be allocatively efficient because we're still maximizing our consumer and producer surplus. But the total gain to society, if the total area of consumer and producer surplus, will change. So sometimes in NCA exams you see them actually say, explain why allocative efficiency will increase. It's rubbish to be honest. Um, but the total gain to society, that is the area of consumer and producer surplus, might have increased or might have decreased. So I guess that's what they're talking about. So. An example, suppose there was an increase in demand. So we've got a new price and new quantity. The total size of consumer and producer surplus has increased because there's more being consumed and produced. So once the market moves to the new equilibrium, it's again allocatively efficient. We've got a new area of consumer surplus, which is bigger than the previous one. And we've got a new area of producer surplus, which again is bigger than the previous producer surplus area. In this case, the producer surplus has actually eaten up some of the consumer surplus area that they used to have. But consumer surplus has increased as well because of the higher demand. Basically, consumers are getting more satisfaction out of this product now for whatever reason. Um, and so both areas increase and society as a whole benefits to a greater extent than they were before. Ultimately, it, this new market, once it's at equilibrium, is allocatively efficient. All right, that's the end of that. Good luck with allocative efficiency, consumer and producer surplus.